I'm Juliet Bryant and this is my new series on healing plants. Oh yeah, the healing power plants, oh yeah, the healing power plants, oh yeah. I love one of my personal oh, yeah. favourites, Rishi Mushrooms. The healing power plants, oh yeah. I love plants. All around me is not just food, but medicine. We've got calendula, chamomile, loganberries, chilies, oregano, strawberries, lettuce. The abundance of nature here to help us. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to harness the power of plants through simple herb teas, a mixed berry vegan cheesecake, and I'm going to show you how one plant is changing the lives of millions and one specific girl that lives locally to us. But first, we're going to go to John Barker's Maple Forest Garden. This six acre field has been turned into a food forest. I asked John to explain how forest gardens work. A woodland forest-based agricultural system, you have a perfect um, cycle of nutrients um, through the leaves falling, dying, rotting into the ground, the microsoil fungi that grows, you know, develops in the soil, helps other plants. There's a, a really good symbiotic relationship between all the trees and the plants and that's the idea. Uh, things help each other and it, you know, obviously acts fantastically, you hold the soil together, you get less erosion as a windbreak, you know, so many benefits and you get the fuel as well, or the food from the trees, yeah, there's just so many beneficial elements to a forest garden based agricultural system. This sea buck from plant here has actually suckered and you've got new plants which you can transplant in the um, late autumn or winter when the ground's wet enough uh, into other locations or into other, other gardens or forest gardens, it's amazing just propagating itself. There's loads on the other side of the hedge as well. It's absolutely amazing. You know, for me, it's really exciting seeing something like this because quite often we go abroad for our vitamin C things like camu camu and amla and all these other things. But growing in this country is so sustainable for a very, very rich vitamin C crop at high, high in other antioxidants, omega sevens. You know, this is a really nutritious plant which grows very easily. And as John was saying, it can sucker, it can grow all over the place. And, you know, what better thing than to grow our medicine where we live? I love it. Yeah, rose definitely. hips are another really definitely. good source of vitamin C, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. And we just, you just gave really us a really poor. plump Why rose hip. Oh, look. That's right, one of the rose aragosas. We oh, just ate oh, one of these. Ones. That's right. Now, with these, you that's just have to, you can hip, eat yeah. the outside bit, but you can't eat the seeds Maybe inside because they're like bleaching powder. Yeah. The kids put them, you know, traditionally you like put this. them down each other's backs. And just munch round. Munch round, oh. But they're not in the centre. The rosa canina, the dog rose. Yeah, the dog rose. Uh, uh, still perfectly edible. They're very good for making rose hip syrup. Yeah. So it's good boiling them up in a pan, making the syrup, is nice? which is a great uh, medicine. I did some of that last year. <laughs> try made some and, syrup uh, last year. Away the cold, the yeah. viruses over the, the difficult winter months. What's nice to do with the rose hips as well is to dry them, <coughs> and then you can use them through the winter. This is amazing, and this is just sustainable as well. This is a exactly. way of having food that is a sustainable. The forest garden in the UK. mimicking, in the UK, mimicking the most effective land use, which is the forest. Mum, yeah, I've cut my finger. Is there any plantain to put on it? How did you know that plantain was a good thing? So, we've got an amazing trick. This thing here, oh, hang on, where's plantain? Down here. This is a plantain leaf. Plantain is an amazing medicine for so many things. If you get stung by a nettle, plantain works wonders. If you get a cut, put plantain on it. Plantain soothes, it's a dis natural disinfectant and antiseptic, and a really, really great thing. So the plantain uh flowers are these things here. Okay, there's different types of plantain. You've got greater plantain, ribwort plantain, um, any of the plantains work well. Now plantains are on paths because they like to be trodden on. So they like that kind of trampled ground. So this wrapping this round is going to help protect his finger. It's going to help soothe it and stop it hurting so much. It might sting a bit and hashtag 
<laughs> it's also good for babies to play with. Okay, so let's just show them. We've wrapped his finger in a plantain plaster that's going to take the pain away, it's going to disinfect it and it's going to soothe and calm it. So plantain is an amazing medicine that is everywhere, go out and find some. We're absolutely thrilled to bits with, um, with, with how it's all going up here. I mean, um, you come up here and it's, it's like a paradise yeah, really. Yeah, um, lovely you know, place for the family. Alive with life, um, a wonderful place to come and relax and spend time together. Um, and, and pick lovely fruit and vegetables and salad that we've grown. Oh, um, I mean, what, 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 what more could we ask for? We're, we're, we're very blessed. As well as getting food from your hedgerows, you also get the beauty of the flowers um, to attract the pollinators, and uh, so that's food for the mind. Mm -hmm. So we've got some lovely mallow here. Mallow is great for coughs. Uh, you can make, you can juice it, you can uh, cook it like a spinach, um, you can make a uh, cough medicine by making a tea with it and it's really effective at lining the whole uh, throat area. Is that the, the flowers or the leaves? Both. For, for, a, leaves. for a tea? Flowers and leaves for a tea. Lovely. Fountain of crab apples coming down from the trunk, it's just, yeah, well, there's more than enough, uh, many, many thousand uh, fruits there to pick. Today we're going to make a mixed berry vegan cheesecake. We've got some of the berries from John's land and now we're going to forage in my garden for the rest of them. Look at my blackberries. They're not ready yet but they will be soon and boy what a crop we're going to have. One of my favourite places in the garden is underneath my mulberry tree. There are literally hundreds of these super nutrient berries, these little black jewels ready to pick. Now a few loganberries. Wow, the sun's come out and look at these beautiful fruit that we're about to use in this vegan berry cheesecake. From John's land we have the gooseberries, the cherry plums and the skin of the rose hips. From our garden we have the mulberries and loganberries and then we have strawberries and raspberries from the local farm shop. Now let's make some cheesecake. Okay, so we're gonna start by making the top part, which is the nice creamy part. So we've got a cup and a half of cashew nuts here, which we're gonna put in. We've got a small tin of organic coconut cream. In that goes. Lovely. And we have a cup and a half of mixed berries. So in there you go. Now to whiz. Nearly there. Let's have a look and see. We need to give the sides a scrape down and give it a final whiz. We're looking for a nice smooth consistency. And we're nearly there. All done. Great. We're going to get our silicone mould, which we have here. I've got a lovely flowery one, so it's going to look very, very pretty. And we're going to scoop the ingredients in. rich source of vitamin C and antioxidants. Also when you're looking at the purple berries they've got an amazing anthocyanin pigment in them which are a brilliant immune regulator so they're helping to strengthen and regulate the immune system which is just what we need. Pull this off to get these last few bits in. all of this in we're going to put this in the freezer to set but not before I have a little taste mm. yummy berry goodness I'm going to pop this in the freezer now for about half an hour and I'm going to make the base we're going to make the base now 
instead of wasting this lovely ingredients, the remains that are in there, we're going to use this as the start of the base. I've got some local nuts, I've got some walnuts and some hazelnuts. We're going to use a cup of those. We've got some lovely pitted dates and we're going to use a cup of pitted dates. And we've got some dried mulberries, so we're going to use half a cup of dried mulberries. And we're going to give it a whiz. So we've got that great essential fat and local nuts as well, which is a brilliant thing to have. Whilst the berry part of the cheesecake sets, I'm going to show you how to make a local, healthy herb tea. Do you remember I talked about the mallow from John's Forest Garden? Good for coughs and colds. We've got some of that here. We've got some poppy, nice and soothing and calming. We've got some yarrow, good for reducing blood pressure and fevers. And we've got some mugwort, known as the woman's herb. Good for everyone to help bring calm and peace to the being. But we're gonna go and get one more secret ingredient from my garden. Hidden up here are some beautiful flowers, hollyhocks. These are an amazing remedy for coughs. We're gonna get a couple of these. We're going to make a really unusual, interesting healing tea. But there are so many different herbal teas that you can make, hopefully from things in your, your garden or your local environment. So I'm going to take you on a tour of our garden and show you some of the things you can use. Why not try strawberry leaves and oregano? Look at this fennel! The leaves, the seeds and the uh, root all make a really nice tea that aids digestion. Calendula. The power of a flower, soothing and calming, great to go with chamomile. Look, there's even some growing right next to it. This is one of the six varieties of mint I grow at home, great for digestion. When I make a mint tea, I like to use a selection of different types of mint. Get the best of all of them. Sage, perfect for sore throats. Lemon balm, soothing and calming for the mind. Rosemary, scientifically proven to help cognitive function. Let's make some tea. We're going to use this cafetiere and we're going to put our herbs in. Now depending on how strong you, you want your tea or what combination you're using depends on the amount. But we're going to use two hollyhock flowers, two poppy flowers, one head of yarrow, one head of mugwort and one head of mallow. In it goes. That's about half a cup. We're now going to pour our nearly boiling water on top and leave it to steep for five minutes. This will make approximately three cups of tea. And let's put the lid on and leave it to steep. Now whilst this steeps, we're going to get back to our cheesecake. So we've got our bases so far and we're going to add the biscuit part to it. If you were making this as one large cake, you would do the biscuit base first and then you put the creamy berry part on the top. But because we're using these lovely flour moulds, I want that to look beautiful on the top with the creaminess. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the base and we're going to get a nice handful like so. We're going to roll it into a ball like so and then we're going to push it flat between our hands like that, making a nice biscuit shaped piece. We're going to put this then on top of our berry mixture like so. Now off to the freezer to set for another half an hour, or until they're firm. A little while later I popped them out 
and had a brilliant idea. What a divine rose and such a beautiful smell. One of the secrets to a lovely cake is adorning it in beautiful petals. Tea and cake, what better combination? Now to the cake. I've decorated this with flowers and berries. This is delicious. What a lovely thing to sit in the sun, have food that has grown, some of it has grown in my own garden or friends' gardens, and I can enjoy this delicious, healthy cake with an amazing herbal tea. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how to make the berry cheesecake. I love showing people how to interact with plants. Hang on, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Why is uh, Gavin Chapel Bates, singer-songwriter, here with my husband and a Christmas tree? Slightly strange. <laughs> yeah, well, what is this all about, mate? Um, well, we're just throwing the Christmas tree. Why? Everyone, um, well, this, this little fella is going to help us uh, write our vegan Christmas number one. Amazing. Yeah. So why, why have you got the inspiration to write a vegan Christmas number one? Tell me about what's inspired this. Well, because it's about time, I think. It definitely is, but, but tell me more. What's, what's come into your head about it all? It's a, Christmas is a time of peace, a time of love, a time of harmony, or well, it should be anyway. Yeah. But it's also a time of slaughter. Millions of animals, billions of animals killed um, just for a meal on Christmas Day. Okay. Um, so we're asking the world to put peace on their plate this Christmas Day. It's very simple. Love it. And you know, there's so many now delicious Christmas things you could eat, um, you know, for, for a vegan Christmas. It's not like you have to be deprived and eat just lettuce leaves and, and carrot sticks, which I think a lot of people think, don't they? When they think about a vegan meal, they think, well, what are you going to eat? Is it just going to be lettuce leaves? Have you ever had that comment made to you? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Rabbit food. Although exactly. The rabbits seem pretty happy. But. Yeah. But there's so many things you can do. I think last Christmas we made a beautiful um, um, uh, chestnut and mushroom uh, Wellington. Lovely, Ooh. yeah. Wellington is always good. We went Which Wellington. Which is really nice. And it's as you're looking at healing plants here, Julia. Of course, this is the thing. Often when people say, well, "What, what, what is a, a you know a vegan thing?" and and of course, what it is all about is eating plants. Yep. And plants can provide us with all of our nutrients, make us very, very strong and healthy. And also, there's some fantastic musicians uh, that are <laughs> vegan. Uh, Couldn't da -da. beat these two boys. So anyway, <laughs> this man has written a brilliant song. We've knocked together, together. some, 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 with some tree. good... <laughs> with the tree. The tree helps. We've done some fantastic lyrics. And we are going to have a Christmas number one. Uh, we're just finishing off, we've got some more singers to come for phase one of it. Then we're going to be putting it out there, we're going to get some charities back in us. Um, we're going to get some big name people. So Paul, I know you're watching. We've just done a guide a, a guide based part so far, so we'd love you on board. Uh, Mr McCartney, when you get a, a, get a bit of time, we'd love to see you here. Whack down some bass lines. We've got big hopes for this track and you're going to hear a little little snippet. Yeah. I think we're going to just a little snippet you're going to hear. It's so put exciting. peace on your plate. And so, I'm singing on it as well. Oh, well, there we go. So, I think uh, you might uh, see uh, a little bit later on of Juliet singing. Thank you very much. So remember so, it, guys. Peace on your plate. Look out for it, okay? Peace the, on your plate. And the key thing, I think, really with this is that whatever time of year it is, whether it's Christmas, whether it's summer, whenever it is, we can use plant-based food to help support the planet because it doesn't have such an impact on the planet. Support uh, every sentient being because we're not killing or hurting any animals. And that's really key. You know, be organic as much as you can because, again, then we're not hurting life. We're yep. not hurting the earth or the little bugs because they're all part of it, aren't they? And you can have delicious and nutritious food. Yeah, we're going to put peace in your plate. Here's the Christmas <laughs> number one, man. Number one. Number one. <laughs> that her daughter has undergone with one incredible plant has been huge. So, Tanine, tell me about what's going on with Indy. So, um, Indy, you, as you know, you know, she was suffering a lot. We didn't really go out much because her seizures just completely controlled her life. And the medication that she was using, that also controlled her life because it just didn't, it didn't help and it didn't, it didn't work for her and it made her sick. Mm -hmm. So we took a massive step to start treating Indy with pure CBD oil 
and we started doing that fairly successfully in the UK um, but there is no regulated oil here there's no market so you know we have CBD off the shelf but the market isn't as good a quality so we went to Holland and we used medical cannabis that was prescribed to Indy and well the transformation for Indy is, is huge and for us as a family her her ability to run she never ran so just through having cannabis within five days she ran which was something we'd never seen before so totally you know just amazing but you know you keep doubting yourself because you're, you're, not, you're not sure and then 10 days after her taking it she ran to her brother and gave him a cuddle and started to instigate a game which she had never ever done before and you know he was nine months old so that was again amazing the we we watched our child come back to life with cannabis slowly over time so t just totally changed her lives yeah it's incredible because I see Indy coming to Playgroup and have noticed the changes as well and how much more she interacts with people and doing things and how much more relaxed you are mm -hmm. around her because at the beginning when I first met you, you were kind of on her Very constantly yeah. in case she would fall over because her balance was wobbly yep. and now you're so much more relaxed. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it is a full-time job looking after a disabled child but when you're not constantly fearful of her dropping and having a seizure and hurting herself. It's, a, it's an amazing feeling to have the ability for your daughter to be able to play in a sandpit or yeah. you know, just, just play in the paddling pool and you can pop inside quickly because you have the faith in cannabis and you know that that cannabis and, and importantly the CBD and the THC is, is saving her life and it's keeping her happy daily. So when it comes to cannabis and seeing the changes that she's undergone, you said obviously you're doing CBD and THC. Mm -hmm. um, what have you noticed is the difference with adding the THC into the mix? So firstly, I'd like to say with um, medical cannabis, people talk a lot about medical cannabis, but we, we must be clear that we, we need whole plant cannabis. It must be whole plant cannabis, not isolated yeah. compounds, because that isn't a synergetic effect. That isn't what these children need. You know, our bodies, as you know, are deficient in, in cannabis because we don't use it. So mm. for, for somebody like Indy, the entourage effect is huge because all of the problems she suffers, so they wasn't just seizures, we had bouts of insomnia for 36 hours. We had panic attacks daily for four hours sometimes, where our heart rate would be like 190. I now know that I can look at my cabinet and I can go, okay, CBD, we need some CBD. We can calm, we can calm the situation down with CBD and it's non-toxic. Mm -hmm. And for a mother of a child with a severe seizure disorder, that is a relief in itself. At three o'clock in the morning, when you have a child having a panic attack and you have nothing to give, it's a frightening place to be, but now it's not a frightening place to be. It's about learning about the cannabis plant, understanding what each compound does. So the, the panic attacks have gone, and, and that hasn't happened because of CBD, but that's happened because of CBN and CBG and the other compounds in cannabis. So we must, we must use whole plant cannabis, and that obviously includes THC as well. Um, for these children, it works fairly well in low, in low forms, but it is part of the medicine. It stops cluster seizures, it stops prolonged seizures. There is no need for any other medication with somebody like India at the moment. We haven't used anything for over a year. She hasn't gone to hospital. She hasn't been um, had an ambulance out. She hasn't had a panic attack for a year. That's incredible. Yeah, the change, that was horrific, watching my child panic. So for people who don't necessarily understand all of that, what, what's going on in the body, and this is just my take, obviously you know a little bit more about it than me, but in cannabis there are over 120 cannabinoids. Now cannabinoids are the things like CBD, like THC, these are cannabinoids. There are terpenes in there as well and these all interact together to form the effect on the body. Now how these work is we have something called an endocannabinoid system in our body. And guess what, and I think this is amazing, breast milk is the richest source of endocannabinoids in anything. So when you start off life with this new baby and you put them to your boob and they start feeding, they're getting all these cannabinoids and they're feeding this endocannabinoid system. And to me, the way I like to view it, it's like the foundations of a house. Absolutely. So it's kind of underpinning the nervous system, it's underpinning the immune system, it's underpinning everything. So if that foundation isn't very strong for whatever reason, we need to add those cannabinoids back in. Now obviously cannabis is one source of them, as I said, breast milk is another. Cacao's got cannabinoids in, echinacea's got cannabinoids in. So there are other places we can go, but obviously cannabis is one of the richest sources. Yeah. 
with the, the most collection of them. So by giving cannabis to people with anxiety, with depression, with pain, with arthritis, with uh, epilepsy, with cancer, with multiple sclerosis, with Parkinson's, the list goes on. It's feeding the foundations of the house to help support the body to be strong. Well, the way I see it as well is exactly like that. You know, we have an endocannabinoid system. If we don't feed it, it lacks. If yeah. we need vitamin C, we get vitamin C. You know, it, it, it seems that we have this built up fear of cannabis that is completely un unnecessary. All we're simply doing is, is replacing indigenous can cannabinoids within our body with phytocannabinoids. That's all we're doing. And we do that with plants yeah. every day, yeah. every single day. And the, the shocking thing for me is when um, when we worked together and we spoke to people about the CBD and people frightened to give CBD to their children people um, oh this is not for children it's absolutely for children mm. this is about children this is about parents this is about the, the whole perception of it needs to change yeah. so that people use it effectively well, I think the thing is people are very scared that they're gonna make their child stoned you know <laughs> they think that they're, they're gonna give CBD to their child and their child's gonna be laying their mong down <laughs> going I'm hungry give me food I've got the munchies you know and this is the perception that has been drilled out since the the 20s when it was suddenly like cannabis turned into a marijuana and it was this big evil yeah. thing Street cannabis is very different to the cannabis that was grown medicinally in gardens for many reasons. For balms, we have receptors in our skin, so um, you know our bodies are designed to use this as they yeah. are everything else. So. And you're making an amazing balm, aren't you? I'm trying, yeah. Uh, which is really <laughs> exciting. And, and with Tanine's help, I created a CBD hot chocolate mix, which is really good for children to have as well. Really easy because it's in the form of a lovely hot chocolate drink or cold chocolate drink. You can yeah. have it hot or cold. And uh, What's been really exciting with that is that so many people have been able to go, it's taken the fear out of it because they go, oh, I can give my child a hot chocolate and that's got uh, a dosage of CBD that's going to help support them, but they're not going to get stoned. Yeah. So it's taking that, it's demystifying, isn't it? That's, that's what this is all about, demystifying everyone to know that this is a plant and this is it's medicine. It's very safe, very, very yeah. safe plant to use. Um, I think the levels of toxicity, you know, they're so high it's impossible to reach toxicity with cannabis um, you you know you recreationally you'd have to smoke a lot of cannabis to to um, be very unwell um, it is fairly safe and, and when you're looking at it from a really medicinal point of view in children with epilepsy or suffering severe anxiety ADHD their then children are being given drugs anyway yeah. that sedate them mm. that aren't good for the immune system if we can use cannabis in replacement of some or all of these drugs it means that we are supporting their system yeah. like Indy hasn't had a cold for like a year Amazing. like it, it helps with so many things yeah. you know she has hypermobility she used to fall all the time so her joints are quite inflamed and it's one of the best anti-inflammatories you know so from a whole perspective Indy has only used cannabis for a year and she has a severe epileptic condition so from my perspective cannabis works and it works really really well and it's really really safe in comparison to, to what we have medicinally yeah. and I think some of the the pharmaceuticals we don't know what the long-term effect is going to be either with them the, mm -hmm. the, the, the damage that these synthetic substances can do potentially to the body as opposed to using something natural um, and what you said before about that the not having the isolates I think that's a really important thing it's you know it applies to so many different food things like turmeric all these different things when we take out and extract things and start going oh turmeric curcumin's the active component we'll take that out because that's got anti-cancerous properties but actually nature is so clever it's intentional and it exactly it designs things with all these other bits in it because that's how your body best absorbs it absolutely and so with the cannabis you've not just got the cbd or the thc you've got this whole variety of the terpenes and and everything else and the fat in there to help your body absorb yeah. it as well don't you yeah it's a really really all-round amazing product i mean my two-year-old son i put the farms on him if he hurts himself and he's more than happy goes off running around the garden and you know i think that actually with our children we need to normalize this so that when they are older that they normalize cannabis and and people um, don't suffer from not being able to use it like stigmatization of things like fibromyalgia or ms where people have to um source their own cannabis to, to make themselves well and it's quite difficult so. it is i mean my mum had multiple sclerosis in fact today is her birthday oh. it, she would have been 69 um but she used cannabis really effectively she was prescribed it in the states she was 
cannabis that she smoked um, and it stopped her spasms mm -hmm. it was such a difference her eyes wouldn't spasm her hands wouldn't spasm so she could actually when she'd smoked some she could actually not uh, shake so she could pick up her yeah. own cup of tea instead of ha someone having to feed her and that's a massive it's thing it's amazing it's like having your life back yeah to be able to do these things for yourself and I have witnessed things very similar myself with people that use cannabis and um, how many years ago was that Julia in in Ooh, over 20, 25, 30 years ago? So 25, <laughs> I'm giving 20, away my age 25, 30 years ago, we had access to medicinal cannabis in America. And we're still sitting here trying waiting. to destigmatize and waiting for that access. Yeah. So I think that that's also really important that, that across yeah. the world, they are using this product in variants of different ways, within drinks, within food products, and within medicinal reasons. So. Yeah, so we need to start moving this along and changing the way we're viewing plants. Um, and that's what this series is all about, how we can use healing plants to change our lives and the lives of those around us. How we can turn to nature for solutions as opposed to anything else. I've made you some cake. Lovely. So, um, talking of plants and changing our lives. Cheers. Oh yeah